Hello, everybody. This is Kyrix with another edition of This Week in Kyrix. Today is Wednesday, June 14th, 2017. And, uh, oh boy, did I have a scare today. Was out playing Pokemon, like I do on Tuesdays. And yes, I know today is Wednesday, and I'm like, well, today I had this scare. Yes, remember, I, I sleep in the mornings. Although I actually slept today for reasons that I may get into. Nothing really impressive, it's just kind of... Basically, I've been staying up too late, and I didn't sleep like I normally do, and Pokemon caught up with me, you know, just snuck up on me, and bleh, you know, that kind of thing. But anyway, uh... I'm at Pokemon, I'm battling, because, you know, I do that. I was actually doing decent. Uh, played against the main guy there in doubles, and I've been getting my ass whooped because I don't doubles. I just don't. I'm not good at it. I am, to quote Proton John, hot garbage when it comes to doubles. I like that phrase, hot garbage. I've been watching him play uh, Death Road to Canada on his streams. Not current ones, just, oh look, here's a game, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> As usual, I was introduced to it by uh, watching his, uh, what are they fucking called? His little animated things. Not his. People animate his videos and Luke Jens and a whole bunch of other stuff. And this one was uh, the mystery of the ghost fart or something from uh, from Death Road to Canada. And it's goofy and I fucking love it. Uh, that is the thing I'm going to try and buy next month. But, uh... But yeah, every time he'd see something crappy, he'd refer to it as hot garbage. Like, oh, this stat is hot garbage. Your stat for this is hot garbage. I like that. It's funny. Kind of cute. But, uh, anyway, uh, hot garbage and doubles, which is funny because the upcoming tiny tournament that I'm training for is doubles, and I am totally going to get my ass kicked. Because I'm just not trained for it, you know? I fought this girl in singles and just tore her up. I mean, she put up a good fight, but oh, I did some dirty, dirty, dirty fucking tricks. Involving pretty much my whole team, really. Uh, in this particular thing, I led off with uh, Fortress, and she had Lucario. And she, I don't remember what she did, but she was doing setup, you know? She did something to me right off... Or no, she, she didn't leave with Lucario. She led with Raichu. That is, Alolan Raichu. First thing she did, paralyzed me. I'm like, okay, fuck it. I'm a Foratress. I'm not outspeeding shit. So I set up my Stealth Rock, you know. Tossed out Toxic Spikes. Like, oh, you're gonna do that? Here, let me toss out Lucario. And Lucario copycatted my Toxic Spikes. Only one of them, but still. Copycat, for those who don't know, does whatever I did last. So I'm sitting here thinking, oh, Toxic Spikes on my field. Not good. Very not good, in fact. And, uh... Of course, then I did the spike setup. I had one Toxic Spike, and she had time to set up all three spikes, and so did I. I'm like, well, on the, pl on the one hand, this is real good for me, because it's giving me all the time I need to set up. On the other hand, she's got half a setup on me... I could rapid spin, but she'll just copycat the rapid spin, and I'll have to start this whole fucking process over. So, I pulled him back, and threw out, uh... I want to say it was Noivern. But either way, I, I pulled out a flyer. You know? Actually, I, I want to say it was Driftblim now. <clears throat> and I just fucked around a bit, damaged the character, did some setup of my own, some stat setup this time, and then pulled back for a uh, baton pass. In this case, it was, yeah, it was stockpile. I did two stockpiles, which she copycatted because, of course, she fucking did. Funny thing is, I tricked her on the uh, setup, on, on the swap out. I swapped into Driftblim the exact moment she chose to hit me with a uh, Aura Sphere, which would have been fairly devastating, you know, but it wasn't, because Ghost type. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I just rode that shit out. It didn't bother me in the slightest. And then she had two stockpiles, of course, because I had two stockpiles, and Noivern, uh... 
See, the thing was, I was desperately, desperately fucking hoping to uh, do a baton pass and then have her copycat to baton pass and get that fucking Lucario out of there, but it didn't work. I don't know, maybe it has something to do with how priority works with baton pass. But, uh... Noivern made relatively short work of her Lucario, and it managed to survive with two hit points. Whereas Lucario survived with absolutely none. Because it didn't survive, it got its ass kicked. Just like I planned. But, uh... <clears throat> uh... My Noivern, for reasons unbeknownst to me, because I don't remember what I was thinking when I trained the damn thing originally, <clears throat> new Roost, which is, hey, I turn off my flying type, the actual type, and in exchange, I heal half my hit points. It's, it's a recover with a twist, basically. <clears throat> and I twist covered, and that was useful for me. And, uh, got myself back. And I forget what she switched into then, but, uh, I killed that too with my friend. And then she switched into something else. I have the actual video, but I don't feel like watching the whole thing right now. She switched into something else, so I switched back into Fortress. And at this point, she's like, dude, I, I laid out the toxic spikes and the spikes and it didn't do anything to them. I'm like, yeah, because all the Pokemon I've sent out fly. I was like, those aren't affected by flying? I'm like, that's right. Flying dodges, spikes, and toxic spikes, but not stealth rock. And, uh, that worked out really goddamn well for me. So. Now that I got Fortress out, Fortress was taking a bit of a pounding, but it lived. You know, I, I'm honestly half tempted to put leftovers on the little fucker. If not for the fact that I know Quick Claw will probably save my life more. We'll see. I've still got time. <clears throat> and I finally did the rapid spin to clear the field. So now, she's got full setup on her, and I've got no setup on me. And it's just blatantly unfair, and I fucking love it. And I did a couple other nasty things. Long story short, I won that one. Big time. And then we, I let her switch teams and pulled off pretty much the same exact thing, except this time I sent out Drift Blim. And Drift Blim did a full minimize, which wasn't six. I think it's like three or four minimizes max. And Baton passed into Noivern again. And Noivern proceeded to carry the rest of the team for me. And she's like, why am I not hitting? It's like, oh, I've got a Pokemon with a 100% accuracy. I'm like, it can still miss. Unless it has blank accuracy, which is a dash, it can still miss. And it did, frequently. And every time she'd fuck Noivern up, I'd just roost again. Because with all those minimizes, my, my evasion was through the roof and she couldn't fucking connect. <clears throat> Turns out she didn't realize that that's what Baton Pass did. It's like, well... I thought when you switched out, all those things do. I'm like, yes, but not with Baton Pass. And uh, the guy's like, yeah, Baton Pass does that. I'm like, well, it sucks for her, because I had a Drift Blim with Baton Pass minimized and stockpile, and he just kind of winced. He's like, oh, you're mean. I'm like, I know. That's what it was. I was going to put it on, put the leftovers on uh, Drift Blim. But yeah, I did pretty good, and about that time, I got a call from the roommate's girlfriend... Which, they're both my roommates, but I differentiate because they have wildly different personalities. And I don't exactly have their permission to use their names on here. So even though she is also my roommate, nine times out of ten you'll hear her referred to as roommate's girlfriend. Roommate's girlfriend called and like, are you home? I'm like, no, I'm at the library playing Pokemon. Like, oh, I was just there. Uh, anyway, you've got mail from Social Security, and I'm thinking there's only one thing this could possibly fucking be. And of course, my gut sinks, because I'm pretty sure it's them telling me, well, unless you appeal, you're losing this billing. And I don't have a job right now, I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, so, I'm like, well, my morale is fucking shot, so I may as well just ride home. Which, it's just as well, because it was starting to get real ugly outside. And it turns out, uh, I got home in enough time that, uh, like five minutes later, pouring down rain. So it was just as well, but I mean, I would have probably 
gone home anyway, but without this sinking feeling that hit up my stomach the whole time. It's, it's not a fun ride home. I get home, turns out, no, it's not that. It's something completely unrelated. Like, yeah, your ticket to ride program, which I believe is like, oh, you get a discounted bus pass to go to work, uh, is canceled because you don't have disability. My disability is still in flux right now, but it's treating it as though it's canceled, and I understand why. Makes sense. So yeah, that was literally the best possible news that I could have gotten from them, short of, hey, we, we approved you. But uh, still in the process of breeding out my Pokemon team. <clears throat> the internet has been in a weird flux for the past two nights, where at night it just shuts the fuck off and there's nothing I can do about it. At the end of this, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, the internet's been six flavors of fuckity lately, and it's pissing me off. I mean, granted, I don't do a lot of internet browsing at night. Especially since lately I've been recording, which means I don't need to watch YouTube. But it's pissing me off that it's taking the opportunity away from me. Sometimes I want to take a 20-minute break and watch The Wrong Way, guys. You know? They don't need me plugging them, but I'm going to plug them anyway, because they're cool people. No. They deserve a plug or seven. So, uh... Yeah. But that, there's that out of the way. Now, the job thing. I do not currently have a job. Which is... What's the word? Hot garbage. I guess I should grab all my gold. But yeah, that, that's pure hot garbage. Love that word. So fun. So fun, that word. But, uh... I'll get around to that. I did, however, have a job interview last week. For this job and it was pretty amazing because that was remember the job I wrote off the whole call center thing I'm like yeah they haven't called me they're not gonna etc mom and aunt come up from uh, Largo to take me shopping because I need clothing the idea was oh we'll go to the thrift store get some cheap clothes you know not like work clothes just me lounge around the house clothes because I have very few of those it's literally a case of every time I want to I want to take a shower I need to do laundry so I have a clean change of clothes. And now I have much more clothes. But uh, the thrift store that my aunt found was expensive as hell. You know, it's like I may as well be shopping at fucking Walmart. But, Here, you can have these shorts for like 20 bucks. And I had 20 to work with, so I'd be getting like a pair of shorts. And they're these ugly fucking jean short things. You know? That are the wrong fucking length. There's just everything you look at these things you're like, oh, this is. This is not how this should work, you know. Shit. I, I shipped a geode that I didn't mean to ship. Where's my gold? So yeah, um... We're at the thrift store and I'm looking at this and we're all basically saying, Dude, the prices here are horrible, the selection's worse. We're just going to have to go to Walmart. And I get a call. It's like, hey, uh, you know, your name. Uh, are you still interested in this job? I'm like, yes. Okay, we need you to come in tomorrow. Uh, what time would be good for you? I'm like, I'm good whenever. It's like, well, set a time. I'm like, well, I can do two. Two's my lunch break. How about three? I can do three. So, I got a job interview. This is on Thursday. The job interview is set for Friday. So I'm like, cool, I'll come in Friday and it'll be awesome. Because I will potentially have a job, and I won't have to be poor forever. You know? Oh, fuck, it's 10,000, not 5,000. God damn it. Got my hopes up for nothing. I have this doll. So... We go to Walmart, I get two shirts, two pairs of shorts, you know, for 20 bucks. 2019, or 2012, actually, if you want to get specific. It's cheap enough that when I finally get a job, I'm going to go there and fucking fill my closet, you know. Take 100 bucks, get 10 shirts, 10 shorts, that kind of thing. 
because I do need new clothes. Because I, I, this is the first time I personally have bought clothes or been involved in the process, rather, because I never bought clothes as a child either. It's the first time I have chosen to spend money on clothes, other than like, oh, I'm at a, I'm in an event kind of thing, you know. But uh, yeah, it's. This is the first time I have been involved in the process in about 15 to 20 years. I've never been a clothes person. Also, 9, 10, 11, yeah, we're, we're ending on 12. But, uh, all my, basically, every now and then I'll get a call from my aunt or something like, Hey, I was at a thrift store and I grabbed you these, you know. So, my clothes tend to be kind of thread threadbare in some spots. Some of them, like... Uh, shirts will get thrown out because the washing machine finally puts a thousand holes in the back. It looks like someone shot me with a machine gun from behind, you know, or like I tossed it into a paper shredder or something along those lines. But, uh, so yeah, I get up there, I put on my very uncomfortable job interview appropriate clothes that I got from the roommate, and oh god, I hate the look of these things. It's just jeans and a fucking polo shirt or something. That's, it's not me. I just don't like the way the shirt looks and the jeans. I I will resist wearing jeans as long as I possibly can. And I even I went to the job interview wearing this with my shorts and shirt underneath it. With the express purpose that when the interview was over, as soon as the opportunity presented itself, the, that shit was coming off. And I didn't care where I was. Of course, if I thought to bring a bag, I could have changed right outside, you know. But I was near my mom's house, so I walked up there, visited her for a couple minutes. Would have visited longer until I looked at the uh, the phone and realized that my bus was five minutes from here, and I had seven or seven minutes away, and I had five minutes to get there, kind of thing. And I even rushed out. I'm like, I don't have time to give you a kiss goodbye. Another one, rather, because I've got seven minutes to get there, and it'll be here in five. Or I've got five minutes to get here, get there, and we'll be there in seven. Oh, well, I guess so. You know. But yeah, grabbed a bag, changed clothes, got a drink, that kind of thing. I think the interview went very well. It, it turns out the guy doing the interview, or one of the two guys, was one of the D&D guys. Not my particular group, but he went to the same place. Like, do I... I, I keep feeling I know you. This kind of sounds stupid. Do you play D&D? I'm like, yeah, I do play D&D. He's like, do you play up there? I'm like, oh yeah, I know the place. I haven't played him forever because I live in St. Pete now, but I've been there. Oh, that's awesome. He's like, oh, you play like Pathfinder and D&D? I'm like, I don't play Pathfinder. Never got a taste for thirds. Like, oh, that's fine. It's not everyone's cup of tea. Uh, funny thing is, at the end, he's like, uh, any questions? I'm like, yeah. Did me not liking Pathfinder disqualify me? He's like, no, you're good, man. <laughs> if anything, honestly, if anything disqualifies me, I think it's my inability to work Tuesdays. And that's... I'm sitting here thinking, God, I, if not for my inability to work Tuesdays, I think I would have this job. And I might still. I, It's still too soon. I mean, he implied that they'd have me starting this week, you know, but it's not necessarily a given. I could very well find out that, hey, uh, we need you to come in next week. And I could get that call today, tomorrow, the day after, fucking weekend. Who knows? I don't know. But if I get this job, oh boy, I will be the most thrilled human being that you've ever met in your life. Alright, we're going to sell you some hard wood, woman. Then I'll take myself down to five grand here. That should be enough to make something happen. But, uh, yeah, the interview, I think, went pretty damn well. I mean, I never had a successful job interview, so I couldn't say for sure, but I think it went well. Alright, the, the, the Snap 2 feature of this controller was really nice, until it started jumping over shit. Now I kind of want the free float back. But anyway, um... So yeah, job interview. I, again, still haven't heard from them, but not given up yet, because I gave up on them before and they fucking called me back. Who knew, right? Um, <coughs> Star Trek. Star Trek tournament is this week. 
as is the Tiny Tournament, or at least the sign-up for the Tiny Tournament for Pokemon. But Star Trek, I completely overhauled my entire team. You know, I just abruptly decided, fuck this, I'm playing differently. And there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you just get that mentality. But, uh, I decided my team of the Defiant was kind of a pain, because there were cards that I really hinged that on, like, uh, the Lakotas, uh, what's it, fuck, the, uh, upgraded phasers that would help me kill fighters easily. Couldn't find it. And uh, on my new build, I actually tried to run with what, at the time, I didn't realize were also the Lakotas, uh, micro power relays, but couldn't find them either. I'm just gonna consider myself to not own the Lakota. When I get a job, that's something I'm just gonna have to buy one of. It's like, oh, I need a new Lakota because mine's fucking half the things in it are missing. But, uh, yeah, I, I ended up skipping the uh, Star Trek practice, because that was going to be Friday. You know, I'm like, oh, what do I do for this? And then it's like, well, your decision's made for you. You're not going to Trek. You're going to this job interview. Because why, why would I ever, well, I'd like to come, but I want to play with my little plastic ships. No, no, I don't. I would love to play with my little plastic ships, but I'd love to be financially secure more. See, I'm gonna have my aunt call my mother's roommate, because I don't know who their phone number is and all that. They're in my phone, but I don't want to dig for them. I'll take myself down. Down to three grand. Seems secure. <clears throat> but, uh... Fuck, I'll do 300 instead of 3 grand. But yeah, I swapped out the Defiant, because the Defiant thing was going to be, oh, I've got all these nice things, and I'm going to be able to shut down one of their figures. Between my my uh, my weapon upgrades, I'm going to have a 5 attack, and I'm going to kill fighters real good. And none of that materialized, because I was missing one of the main things. So I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's take this in another route. Let's build the NX-01. <clears throat> Basically upgrade it to a 3 damage instead of a 2. So it's going to be like the flat Defiant. Plus, I couldn't find my Defiant uh, square card. Not square card, the square piece. Every ship has the following. It has a base. It has the pillars on the base, which those are actually optional, which I found out that... Uh, the, the thing the peg goes into will actually sit on the base, which is really cool, because I had a couple ships where that broke in some regard. And now those ships are no longer off the menu because of that. Specifically the Avatar of Tomet, which is really a pain in the ass to replace because it's a prize ship. But uh, it's got that. It's got the cards, obviously. It's got the ship, also obviously. And then it has, uh, what's it called? The, um, the square piece, which is the nameplate. Like, oh, this is the USS Defiant, or this is Defiant Class. And it shows you, here's my firing arc, here's my shields, my hull, my weapon rating, my evasion. And here are my commands. Like, oh, I can battle stations, I can scan, I can evade, I can target lock. You know, those things. I couldn't find that, so I was proxying the ISS to find, which is the Mirror Universe version. Which I don't like as much, because I run Federation more than Mirror Universe. And I don't like the fact <clears throat> that uh, I need a cloak from another ship to make it work, rather than its own cloak. But, uh... Yeah, I ended up like, no, the Defiance right now is more trouble than it's fucking worth, so I'm not gonna bother. And the NX, I'm like, I'm going to make this thing super evasive. And I did. Just, let me put this, let me, uh, let me paint this picture for you. Uh, agility rating is your normal, I roll this many dice to evade. The Defiant has a 2 agility, which is stupidly high for a Federation craft. 
the NX has a 3 agility rating, which is absurd. Abso-fucking-lutely absurd for anything that's not like a shuttlecraft or a fighter. Very rarely will you ever see anything with a 3 evade just naturally. Unless it's, again, like a fighter craft that's gotten just utterly obliterated, you know? But the NX has a 3 of agility. <clears throat> okay, so that means I'm rolling 3 dice just flat out. Also, the NX has a special ability. You can equip enhanced hull plating for free, whether you have the slot for it or not. So, boom, there's enhanced hull plating. Kyrix, what does enhanced hull plating do? Wow, you have a squeaky voice, but let me tell you. Enhanced hull plating says if you have no shields, which this does not, and if you're not cloaked, which it wouldn't be because it has no shields, uh, when you get hit up to two times, you can just give yourself an auxiliary power token and auto-dodge one attack. Not one attack, one hit. God, I wish it was one attack. Yeah, those ten dice you hit before? No. So yeah, that's two free evades. Not extra dice, just that hit never happened. You know, dream machine battle, this battle never happened. That kind of shit. Um, I know I have some void around here somewhere. Or at least I used to. I not anymore. I do not. Well, that's sadness. Um, but anyway... So that right there, I've got three agility, boom, and I've got two auto dodges, so that's anywhere from two to five misses per turn. That's spectacular. On top of that, let's throw on uh, William T. Riker, who says, hey, you roll an extra die, and you get to turn one of your battle stations into an evade, so that brings me up to four dice and two free evades, with the option to turn a battle station into an evade. That's awesome. Also, if my captain is disabled for any reason, he rolls two dice and gets two battle stations into evades. Fucking killer, man. Uh, how can we make this more stupid? Hey, let's throw on Jordy LaForge from my newly acquired USS Hathaway. He says, hey, get an extra tech slot. Oh, and by the way, you roll one extra defense per tech slot up to two. So now, for those following at the home, I have a six agility, effectively, can turn one thing into a uh, evade, or no, one, one uh, battle station into evade, and two free evades if I aux. This is getting fucking stupid. Granted, I have to, I think I have to disable Jordy to do that, but who cares, you know? But, oh no, Kyrix. The uh, NX doesn't have a tech slot, so that means that uh, that free tech slot that Jordy goes is automatically taken up by the enhanced hull plating, whatever show you do. You can't just have one evade, or one, one free uh, tech slot. Well, that's where T'Pol comes in, from the NX. And T'Pol says, hey, add a tech slot. Also, if you're scanning, they get two less evade instead of one. So T'Pol's going to be my little sweetie here. And, uh, so basically, T'Pol lets me put on a second tech. Originally, it was going to be Micro Power Relays, which is a really good tech. And Micro Power Relays basically says, hey, as an action, I can either heal one non-critical damage or flip all my crits face down so they become non-critical. But that's from the Lakota, and I couldn't fucking find it. So, I ended up doing, from the Enterprise D, from yesterday's Enterprise, Transporter, which cost the exact same. It's three. I had two points left, but Jordy knocks it down to a two. Transporter says, I think it's within one, maybe one, two. Basically, disable your shields, swap crew on a friendly ship, or just put a crew on. What I'm probably going to do is, when, when the battle actually starts, take her over to the Hathaway, which I'll get into in a minute, <clears throat> and put... Uh, what's her name? To Paul on the Hathaway, where she'll do a lot more good, you know, because I will be, uh, I won't have to use an action that I need to re-enable shit for scans. Because Spock auto does that. He he has a free scan or a free target lock, a Spock lock, as I call it. And uh, yeah, but the NX isn't done yet. I also put the Type Eight phasers, bringing it up to a three damage instead of a two. But here's the kicker. 
Uh, why all this defense? Well, that sets up my offense, this guy Serna Kil Kolrami from uh, the episode Peak Performance, and also the OP kit of the same name. It was one of the last ones that I got as a judge. And what he does is if you cancel all of the player's attacks or hits, and I don't know if it works if they don't hit me at all. Like, if they roll seven dice and don't hit any of them, I don't know if that still counts. If it does, it's going to be fucking awesome. But if you cancel all their attacks, you get to basically redirect their fire back at them up to four dice. It kills Kolrami to do it. I'll get into that in a minute. But uh, basically, it lets me take this three dice ship and throw four more back at my opponent. Up to four more. You know? But Kyrix, I'm a strangely informed viewer who happens to know that the NX-01 only has three crew slots, and you cheating bastard just named four crew. Yes, I did, oddly informed viewer. That's because I have a Vulcan captain named Sopek. At least I think it's Sopek. I, there is one Sopek, but I don't know if this one's him. What he does is A, add a crew. B, as an action, take a dead crew and bring him back to life. So, basically, he recycles Kolrami, so every time you shoot me, fucking Kolrami's waiting in the wings to fuck you up. And, again, to, to put this by you, I am running effectively a 6 agility, that is 6 green defense dice, ship, with 2 guaranteed evasions, if I need them. And if I cancel all of your attacks, I'm sending that shit right back at you, unless you hit me with more than four dice. You know? So, have fun with that. Ooh, do I shoot the NX and risk it? No. No, you don't. But, uh, yeah, it's... it's oh, it's so good. So, next ship, the USS Hathaway, which was my purchase of the month. Because every... I'm trying every month to get a new ship. Just so I can start rebuilding my collection. The USS Hathaway was my choice for this month. <clears throat> a Constellation-class ship. And I got it because... And this is really stupid. Because it has another time token and the ship's not bad. Originally, I was going to run a Nebula-class rather than just, uh... You know, the Phoenix, which was my original goal. But I'm like, you know what? I can run the Hathaway, which has almost the same stats. And it has its ability. So I chose to run the Hathaway. The Hathaway says... I can do one of my ship actions, that is my action bar, which is evasion, scan, battle stations, target lock, as a free action if I aux. Good thing, you know, especially since I've got Captain Spock on board. So yeah, I get one of those as a freebie. Uh, Spock gives me the Spock lock or a free scan. Sometimes I'm not picky and I don't care which. Uh, also, the aft torpedo launcher takes up a text slot in this case. That is, disable it, shoot from anywhere that's not your front arc, and the other thing that's really good about the Constellation class over the Nebula is the Nebula has a 90 front arc and no rear arc. The Constellation has a 180 front arc and no rear arc, which the no rear arc, by the way, is an important thing that you need for aft. You cannot put aft launcher on anything that has less than three hull or less than four hull and has a rear arc. <clears throat> which both of those disqualify both the Defiant and the NX, which makes me sad. But uh, that's neither here nor there. The then I put Arsenal, which gives me an extra. It gives me it's a it's a weapon slot, and it takes up two weapon slots, or it gives me two weapon slots rather. And I use those to put time token photons on there, two of them, so that I can fire forever if I so choose. And chances are I'm gonna. And that does it for the Hathaway. So, to let that into perspective, I can re-enable my uh, thing as a ship action, Spock Lock as a free action, and Scan or Target Lock or Evade as a free action as well with an aux. So I just use a green and there I go. So if I toss the Paul over there, I'm gonna have a Target Lock every turn whether I shoot with my primary or fucking torpedo you into oblivion, which I'm probably going to do. <clears throat> I'll have a scan, so you're rolling two less defense instead of one. And
and I'll be re-enabling my aft every turn that I need it, and if I don't, I'll probably battle stations to make that hit land. So yeah, that's some good shit right there. Third ship. Originally, it was going to be the region's flagship with Crazy Beard Riker. That is the term for the Mirror Universe Captain Riker. Which, it's sad, he doesn't have the crazy beard of the thing, but it's still Crazy Beard Riker. Who is probably one of the best captains in the game. And Elam Garrick, who basically says, yeah, I'm going to take Crazy Beard Riker and give him two extra captain points. <clears throat> but instead, I chose to be a dick and play fighters, something I have not done in forever. So I'm playing Federation Peregrine Fighters with uh, Cover Fire. No, not Cover Fire. Uh, this thing that I, I, I think it boosts my captain skill or maybe someone's captain skill. And Support Craft, which is basically, oh, I get an extra ship token, basically. And that's what I'm running. Wish me luck. Matter of fact, wish me lots of luck, because A, I need the fucking internet to turn back on so I can upload this. B, I really need that job interview. C, I've got the Tiny Tournament next week. And D, Star Trek. Now, I completely glossed over this because I had so much to talk about this week. Uh, I am on, I want to say, episode... Nah, 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 go on. Episode 29 of Suikoden 2 Blind. That is fucking awesome. Uh, for those who weren't following along, 22 episodes is how many I needed to finish 2017. I'm done. I'm done for the year. Everything else is just to finish the project and get started on next year. Aside from the four-job fiesta, which I don't technically have to air this year, but I have to air this year. I don't have to do shit for the rest of the year other than my updates. Other than special projects like the four-job fiesta, This Week in Kyrex, and my Pokemon project. I'm done for 2017. It's only June. I'm done for the fucking year. I love it. Congratulate me. <sighs> Sorry about that. Taking a drink. Roommate bought these little 20 ounces. Actually, it's a 16 ounce. Little 16 ounce uh, six pack of Coca Cola, and I snagged one from him. With permission, of course. And I'm just kind of rationing it so I have something to drink tonight. Other than water. <clears throat> so, that's been this week in Kyrex, and I love you all, and I'll see you next week. Bye bye, everybody.